Well, hello again, traders. Welcome to another Shark Week guest webinar. This week-long series is meant to share a variety of topics from different speakers, so hopefully you'll walk away with at least something that will help improve your trading career. Before we get started, let's do a quick test of audio and visual. So if you can hear my voice and see this opening slide, type a Y, you guys are ahead of me. You know what you're doing. Darren, Alejandro, Rick, welcome in. Thanks for coming, guys. As always, my name is Keith here with Shark Indicators. We've been involved in the Ninja Trader ecosystem for almost a decade since 2011, providing tools like Bloodhound and Blackbird that help traders be more productive and in control of their own trade systems. We're always looking for ways to add to the trader's toolkit and Shark Week is a big part of that mission. Before I pass it off to Rob, let's take a quick look at the risk disclosure. Futures, foreign currency, and options trading contain substantial risk and is not for every investor. And past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Rob Mitchell is president of Axiom Research and Trading Inc., the mother company to the oiltradingroom.com, stockindextradingroom.com, indicatorsmart.com, eminiforecaster.com, manifestingyourfuture.guru, futuresautotrading.com, and other ventures. <laughs> Rob has been the largest e-mini S&P trader in the world at various times and has won the prestigious Robin's World Cup e-mini trading championship. He has been a trading system developer for nearly three decades and is a proven researcher, trading educator, presenter, and mentor, helping others to achieve their dreams as traders and in life. So Rob, with that, I'll pass it off to you so we can get started. Cool. Thanks, Keith. You're making me laugh. <laughs> I got too many websites, I know. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks, Keith, for that wonderful introduction, making me putting a big smile on my face. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, we got some really cool stuff I'm gonna share with you guys today. Keith was asking me what we were uh, doing uh, before the event. And um, so today's uh, webinar is entirely new. You know, I've, I've pretty much never covered uh, the things that are in here today. And there, um, at one level, there's a kind of, a certain kind of thinking uh, behind, uh, behind uh, what we're doing. And there's certainly an evolution of uh, the, uh, oil trading room. Actually, I was just reflecting when I was talking with Keith. Was six years uh, we've been doing this every day, you know, and so tens of thousands of hours of screen time and uh, input from uh, various users and everything else. So when Keith asked me about doing the webinar, I was like, "Well, what could I do?" And now um, I've been messing around with these uh, zones uh, systems, which I've actually been doing for uh, close to thirty years, you know, twenty-five years probably. And um, so uh, today's webinar, Secrets of Zone Systems and Trading Smart Dynamic Zones for High Wind Percentages. Um, we're actually gonna cover, I'm gonna cover things that are probably a little bit more historical uh, at first, and then uh, we'll get down into some nitty gritty about how this, this kind of thinking uh, can be used in different ways. But um, I'd like to uh, thank you for taking the time uh, you know, to come in uh, this afternoon and give me an opportunity to show you a little bit about what I do. Yeah. And um, as Keith said, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. There's a risk of loss trading futures. And that goes for Indicator Smart and Oil Trading Room and all, the, uh, all of our sister websites. Yeah. So uh, what are we going to cover today? Well, not, I probably don't have a comprehensive list here, but um, I'm gonna show you some trading concepts that, um, that really actually do work. Yeah. And um, we're gonna talk about zone systems, a little bit of background and usage. Then I'm gonna introduce dynamic zones um, and we're gonna look at it in uh, some different ways to identify leading market conditions or breakout conditions or counter trend conditions, any which way. Yeah. And price order flow or momentum. Um, can be used in all different kinds of ways because we're going to take, like I said, a more global kind of a thinking um, and apply it uh, top down you know, uh, with this. So uh, super easy coding of indicators in Bloodhound and Blackbird. Um, we had been uh, working like crazy to get this because I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't uh, sure I was going to release this, and um, but uh, we've been adding all kinds of 
cool bells and whistles and everything to the uh, to the code I'm going to show you a little bit later. And it's 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 just absolutely at least I think it's a it's a work of art. Um, and it's uh, a, I'd call it a full feature uh, indicator. Um, we'll be learning a little bit about order flow and breakouts and things like that, and um, and the techniques that we're doing. Uh, I'm going to um, be using uh, different charts for different uh, markets, so we'll focus on uh, on various markets that you can use these concepts in. Yeah. Um, Keith had introduced me, and uh, those who know me know. I've been around for a little while and been doing this for a long time. So this is an impromptu webinar. Um, I don't have some, I, I know what I'm gonna talk about, but I haven't really, <laughs> don't get mad at me, Keith. <laughs> I didn't rehearse my webinar. <laughs> um, so, um, but you know, when you've been doing stuff for um, as long as I have, and you probably spent a thousand hours developing this indicator, um, I probably don't need to, I write down a lot of stuff uh, to remember. <laughs> I might remember all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to show you a ton of stuff. Now, um, I have a little funny thing here. It's a 600 page book. And I only came up with that because I was reading a 600 page book the other day. And within the first couple sentences, um, actually, I think, I think in the first sentence of the book, I was absolutely floored at what was, uh, what was said. I was absolutely floored at what was said. And so I just wanted to say, um, and, and maybe some of you have had the experience where you read a book and you shelved it and you came back years later and read it again and the experience was entirely different. If you had a, a book that was 600 pages long and every single page in the book had something in it that could be meaningful uh, to your life, um, but you you gloss it over and looked at the looked at it all as a whole, you might not get any uh, one of those things, and so it's super important because I'm going to show you a lot of stuff, you know. But any one of the statements that I might make uh, after having done this for 30 years, any one of the statements I might make might have that 30 years of experience behind it. Yeah, those um, there could be some. And it's not like I'm trying to hide or obscure anything. It's just that in any one of the things that we talk about today, there could be a whole world to explore. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I've learned in the trading room to trade, uh, train thousand traders. You know um, that. It, you know it's been humbling to do that for six years now because I've had to learn how to teach. Yeah which is something that's been humbling for me because um, that's probably certainly wasn't my forte. Yeah. But, um, but uh, what we found is that if you focus on just one thing, you get a heck of a lot farther than if you focus on 40 or 600 pages of stuff. Yeah. But so um, have that in mind as we go through this webinar today. I didn't mean to belabor that for a long time, but it's super important to focus on one thing and get good at it. You know, um, my father did that growing up, but I didn't catch on. I had to be a jack of all trades. <laughs> so um, different traders have different needs. And so anyone, you know, pick your page. Yeah. And um, uh, then once you learn that one uh, thing, you can mix or match it in all different kinds of ways. Yeah. So you end up getting more by uh, actually having focused down on that, that one thing. Yeah. You also get stack probability, which is something I'm not going to explicitly talk about today, but uh, it's inherent in uh, the kinds of things we're going to be talking about. Stacking probabilities for high probability. Yeah. And that way you end up trading in the way that you like. And so it's natural to you. Yeah. And that's, that's a big thing too. Super important stuff. Um, some of the most effective trading systems ever developed are zone systems. Zone systems are traditionally implemented on price. Yeah. So in uh, the webinar, I'm gonna show you how to apply a zone system. We're just gonna cover it conceptually, pretty much. I'll, I'll throw a few uh, little bones in there, things that uh, took years to figure out. Um, and you can take each one of those as a, a page or, uh, or whatever. Um, 
And then we're going to take those same concepts and we're going to apply them to order flow or any indicator that you want to do it on. We're just going to do it on order flow today. Yeah. Um, examples of zone systems include, but are not limited to, and definitely not limited to in any way, because the more I started thinking about this, the longer that list became. I mean, way beyond three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, floor pivots are an example. You know, you get your pivot. Once, uh, it, there's different ways of doing it. Open plus high plus low plus close over four. Yeah. Larry Williams made that popular uh, decades ago uh, by he'd make a morning call. You know, off of floor pivots. Yeah. Could also be uh, high plus low plus close over three. And um, you call that the pivot, and then you take levels above and below that. Yeah, Camarillo Levels is doing something similar to that. Um, uh, for example, you could break down the prior day's range into, say, for example, quartiles. I don't mean to use a big word, but you know, you break it into four sec four chunks. Yeah, uh, or you could break it into deciles. You break it into ten chunks, and then what you do is you study how the market responds as it goes through or touches those levels, yeah? So like for example, on floor pivots, on floor pivots, the generalized rule is, and this goes for Camarilla as well, the generalized rule is if, if you open, you know, if you open above the pivot, you're gonna trade to, um, you're gonna trade to R1, yeah? If you cycle through R1, you'll go to R2, but when you go to R2, you uh, probably fade back down to R1. You know, um, it's pretty rare for the market to go from R2 to um, R3. That's, you get that on the days where the range is really expanding. Yeah. So the market becomes more, uh, the more the market expands out, uh, the more trend oriented it becomes. You know, pretty uh, basic stuff. Um, and uh, so Camarillo levels will work the same way. If you're not familiar with Camarillo levels, there's a, a video on the, uh, Indicator Smart website, you could go uh, view that. Kind of interesting. Uh, market profile, yeah. Market profile levels are, uh, are zones, yeah. I'll throw a couple of uh, statistics at you that we use on a daily basis um, to great success. Um, if you open inside a value in just about any market, if you open inside the value area, so what's the value area? This is just a, a chart here. Um, this is a, a value area chart, you know, and the value area low today, this is up for the ES today, you know, the value area low today is uh, 33.42.50, and the value area high is uh, 74.75, 33.74.75. Yeah, so it's like, a, um, it's like a, uh, let me see if I get the right one here. It's that zone right there, yeah. Now, if you open inside of a uh, value, which it did, which it did, here's your stats. This is even part of the webinar, I'm just uh, throwing this in on the side. If you open inside that value area, the probability of, uh, oops, I don't wrong one. Uh, the probability of closing inside that value area is 33%. If you, um, the probability of closing above it is 33%, probability of closing below it is 33%. So it's even, uh, even Steven, you know, even Steven on that guy. So you open inside that box, um, above, uh, below, uh, uh, inside, all about even, you know. If you open inside that box, the prob what's the probability of tagging one of the value area extremes? That would be the high, up, uh, high one up there, the low one down there. About 80%. Actually, I, I'm sorry, it's higher than that. Um, it's higher than that. Uh, that that's actually up uh, upwards of 90% or even higher. Yeah. Um, and then it's about 80% to tag the prior day's range extreme. Um, today, it just happens to be the same as yesterday's high. Yesterday's high is right here also. So the market opened inside a value, came up, tagged the value area on the prior day's uh, uh, range extreme. Uh, this is another one uh, related to the <clears throat> initial balance, uh, that cyan one right there. Uh, that's about an 80% tag rate, that one right there. 
by the time it gets to the red one, it's only 50. So I'm just uh, sharing with you, these are examples of zones. Yeah. If you open above value, the probability of closing above value in most markets, certainly this one, uh, probability of closing above value is high. If you open below value, below that uh, green line down there, the probability of closing below is high. Yeah. So these are examples of zone systems. We could go on. Um, there's all different kinds of ones. And they can be used in uh, for trending, <coughs> excuse me, or counter trending. When we open inside a value, and I know I'm going to tag the value area extreme, uh, and I'm opening uh, right kind of in the middle, uh, then uh, once the market starts establishing a trend, I know that it's going to um, um, it's going to traverse a good distance. So I can tr uh, trend trade inside of that uh, structure. And the nice thing about that is I know that I have 30 minutes of 30 minute chart. I know I've got 30 minute players on my side with that. Yeah. So example of a zone system. Um, and these are just static levels on the chart. That value area doesn't change uh, through the whole session. Yeah. Now you could you could have um, uh, zone systems where the levels are changing. Yeah. You could even consider um, tagging prior uh, zones or uh, pivots on the chart as a zone system. Just all different kinds of themes and variations of the way that you can uh, think about these things. Yeah. I see there's some uh, questions there. Let me make sure I'm uh, answering everybody's question. Um, yeah, so that was a 30 minute chart that we were just covering on. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so uh, we covered you open in value 33%. Uh, in, out, or out of value on each of the three zones that are created by that. Yeah. Um, if you open out of value, you tend to close uh, out of value on the same side. Uh, we covered the initial balance uh, levels um, uh, that 150%, um, that cyan line that we just looked at, that's about an 80% tag daily, 79%. Yeah. And the second one is um, about 50%. Uh, what are other um, uh, levels that uh, people commonly use? VWAP and uh, the point of control. The point of control is the one in the middle. That's the most common, um, commonly traded at price. If you look back to this prior day, that's the thickest point on the chart for the session. Yeah, that red one right there. And that's called the point of control. Yeah. The point of control is in between the value area high and the value area low. Yeah. I did a webinar years ago. It was the first webinar I ever did. Um, uh, with uh, Mike's uh, uh, trading. And if you go on the webinars page of our website, um, that covers all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it covers all this kind of stuff. Yeah. We talked about floor pivots trading to R1, S1. Um, I don't have a chart that has that uh, handy on here, um, but it's the same. This is one of the first kind of zone systems I ever really learned about. So what you would do if you were researching that kind of thing is you would ask the question, oh, if I opened inside of the same thing that we just did with this, the, exactly the same concepts. If I open inside a value or inside of the uh, R2S2, what's the probability that I'll trade to our, um, uh, that I'll trade up to R2S2? If I open inside of R2S2, what's the probability I tag? And the probability is probably about similar to what we just talked about. Yeah, probably pretty similar to what we just talked about. If I open up above R2 or uh, below S2, what's the probability I go to R3? Yeah. Or uh, if, I, if I'm trading inside of uh, R1, uh, S1, what's the probability that I go to R2, S2? You'll notice those of you that know me know that I just love uh, probabilities. I, I, I love a trade where I go, where I can say, this is 96% to go. Why do I love that? Because if I'm wrong, I know that I got nicked by the 4%. You know? so, so, but all the concepts that we just talked about on the market profile apply to the floor pivots. Same thing with Camarilla. So you, you go through and you rigorously test every single combination. Are you going to get super high win percents with this kind of stuff? Nah, not super high. You're not going to get 90% stuff, 95%, 96%, some of those kinds of things that we might see a little bit later in the webinar, yeah. So, um, you know, if you can uh, hit 
uh, you know, 79% with this kind of stuff. We, we said 79%, 80%, even 90%. Actually, if you open inside of a value area, that's pretty high probability you're tagging one side or the other. Yeah. So once the market starts trending there, there's a good chance of it's, it's going to carry through for you. So you trade in that direction. Yeah. Until that goal is met. Uh, in crude oil, uh, earlier today, we um, uh, we traded up to that value area and it uh, banged up in there. I don't have that chart handy. But um, uh, and then it finally blew through it. And when it blew through it, it did so with gusto. Why would it, why would it uh, go through the level with gusto? Um, because the 30-minute players were trying to push it down and they all got caught on the wrong side of the market. Yeah, so the market moved like 25, 30 ticks, which is pretty cool. And if you're anticipating that, you uh, know what's going on with that kind of stuff, it's kind of cool. So a zone can be trend or uh, counter trend, you know, could be breakout. So you keep banging into the value rate high, banging into the value rate high, banging into the value rate high, breakout. Catch all, the, all those traders on the wrong side of the market, they're all getting stopped out, carrying your trade to success. You know? so definitely, it's good to know when you're trading in the market, um, you know, a lot of people think of trading in terms of, you know, the, the other traders are the enemy. That's actually not true. <laughs> That's a big mistake. The other traders are the ones that carry your trade to success because you're already in. So you're surfing. You know, so, you know, if I live here in California, you know, you're going to go surfing. You're not going to try and tell the wave what to do. You're going to get up on that guy and it's going to carry you. Yeah. And if you're smart, you'll get off it before it carries you all the way ashore so you don't have to swim all the way back out again. <laughs> yeah, these concepts apply. Right? So um, what are other kinds of zone things? A half back or the midpoint? Yeah, 50% retracement. We were talking, uh, that I was talking to somebody about in the last 24 hours. Uh, WD Gann said the, <clears throat> the midpoint or the 50% retracement is the single most important point on a chart. Yeah. Well, half back uh, we, is a term that we use for the midpoint of the session. Yeah. Well, what is that? This like it's similar to what we were just doing. Yeah. It splits the uh, it splits the uh, session into two zones above and below. Yeah. And um, particularly on the half back, higher time frame players love to trade that side that side of the uh, of the market. So the trend, you can um, use half back for as a trend determinant. You know? What's another one? Overnight high, overnight low. What's the probability of tagging those guys? Oh, 97%. You know? 97%. Well, that's good to know. You know? Don't want to get on the wrong side of that thing. The market will uh, get there. Um, uh, with really high probability. So if it starts moving in that direction, you look for signals in a, in a tighter time frame and uh, let it carry you to success. Why? Because you have higher time frame players. Or you got higher time frame players uh, trading with the halfback. You got higher time frame players carrying your trade to success. Yeah. The trend is your friend. The other traders are your friend. Yeah. So session high and low. Um, so always see, be careful at the edge. Let me see if I can find um, an example of this. This is really cool, guys. Um, I use this, uh, this is called, uh, this is a, a table that I use in the uh, trading room. It's called the super map, okay? This is really cool. What's this tell me? It tells me that the first 30 minute period of the day is 90%, this is for today, yeah. It tells me, and this is for crude oil, um, Actually, the one for the uh, ES is even cooler. Look, look, uh, let's look at that one. Um, okay, here's, here's the one for the ES. Okay, so uh, A period, first 30 minute period of the day, it's 100% to break the last two 30 minute uh, uh, ranges. And it's 90% to break the prior five. Whoa, <laughs> that's a, you know, that's uh, two and a half hours of range. That's going to break all of it. You know, that 90% probability. You know, is that a zone system? You bet it is. Screaming at you. Yeah. What's the probability that it breaks it by uh, one handle? 
100%. What's the probability it breaks it by two handles? 100%. What's the probability it breaks it by three handles? 90%. Yeah. Pretty cool. But uh, check this out. If I go back over to um, uh, these concepts, Mike will work on anything. Works on anything. But I'd suggest that you uh, get it down uh, where you have some assistance going with you. Um, so uh, check this out. Um, this one says that I'm going to break the prior two by 80% in the first 30 minute period of the day, but it's only going to take it out by five ticks at 60%. Wait a minute. I'm going to break the prior two at 80%, but I'm only going to do so by uh, five ticks at 60%. That means it's 40% against the minute it uh, ticks through that level. Yeah. Look at this one. It's 70% to break, but it's only 30% to go five ticks. So somewhere between, remember that uh, chart we were just looking at a minute ago? I told you it's 80% uh, it's, uh, to go to this one. It's only 50% to go to that one. Yeah. So somewhere between there and there, I go from 80 to 50%. Yeah. Okay. Well, on this one, um, what that's telling me is that I'm going to go out that edge, but I'm not going to do so. So I go from 90% to 60% in five ticks. <laughs> so, you know, you, you know, if you're in our trading room or something, you'll hear me say, be careful at the edge. It's 30%. It's going out that edge by any uh, reasonable margin. 30%, 40%, 30%. Yeah. So you got to be careful at those edges. Yeah. Well, what's the edge then? It's a zone. <laughs> <laughs> we got zones coming out of our ears here, yeah. Yeah, so uh, these are uh, new highs and new lows as zones. This, this is what I mean, this, um, we're using zones as a concept here, yeah. You can call it an edge, and either you're gonna get faded at that edge, or you're gonna have counter trend traders uh, step in and take control, or you're gonna follow through in a breakout. The question is, What's the most likely direction for range expansion? That would be the next question. Yeah. Well, the thing that can tell you that is, um, you know, where you are in relation to halfback and things like that. But um, things like order flow or uh, breakouts and uh, the kind of structure that you're getting can really tell you uh, which way that's going to be, and that can help you to be on the right side. Now, I'll throw something else in here that's kind of cool. If you are um, if you know that higher level question, what's the most likely direction for range expansion, then you know which side to be looking for the signal on. Yeah, big game changer, big game changer, right? As opposed to just trading signals this way, that way, every which way, and uh, your broker's uh, living in a mansion on uh, Lake Michigan. <laughs> um, so some uh, some zones move, yeah, you know, like the ones that we're just talking about, you know, as opposed to the ones earlier that are fixed, like market profile or Camarillo or uh, flow pick and stuff like that. Yeah. You know? Now let's see what else we got here. Oh, I couldn't spell very well right there. We'll fix it. Okay. Same concepts can be used to parse out order flow or any other indicator. Yeah. Same concepts we're using. So just take everything that we've done so far and chunk it into a really uh, high level category. Of course, you know, you gotta learn it first, but, um, but you just take that bigger uh, question. Am I at an edge? Am I at a, a zone extreme of any kind? What's the most likely direction for range expansion is question number two. Now, I'll tell you a secret about order flow. Order flow leads price. That's a fact, you know that. Yeah. Anytime I um, uh, make a statement with a, a, a probability associated with it, Kyle, um, that's based on uh, known statistics over long periods of time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we generally, I've been talking with Keith about this before the webinar. We don't back test. We don't have to. We've been watching this thing for, um, for years and years and years. Yeah. We know what it does. Yeah. So um, we can then go and back test. There's a big difference between conducting a test on something that you already know works and conducting a test on something that you don't have a clue what it even is. Yeah. But you can get into a lot of trouble designing trading systems. This is another page in the book. 
know, you can get into a lot of trouble designing trading systems that don't have a, a logic behind them. You know, I'm showing you stuff that's got logic behind it and it's the very logic that moves markets. You know, it's not by accident that we're talking about this. You know. So now taking all that we've talked about, what are we doing here? We're talking about overlaying a context, but now we're going to apply that to order flow. We already know that order flow leads price movement. If you're in our trading room for any length of time, you know that the, our order flow metrics lead price a high percentage of the time. You know? High percentage of the time. And that enables us to see things. When we overlay that context onto order flow, it, it helps us to see things that otherwise would be invisible or really hard to see. You know? So. We're going to use this indicator that I've been developing for a thousand hours, probably more. That's um, called the Smart Dynamic Zones, and we got plenty of people in here that are um, have seen this in action and how it works. Yeah. And I'm going to cover some different patterns on the Smart Dynamic Zones. We're going to use it on price and order flow. Yeah. And uh, but for the order flow, we're going to use the Trap Trader Oscillator from Indicator Smart. Okay. This indicator can be applied to price or any other indicator. The indicator is designed to allow embedding of any other indicator or data series into it. You can put anything in there. You can put the price in there. It was a great little trend indicator. Yeah. Uh, you could stick a momentum in there, a stochastic. You could stick order flow in there, this, that, or the other. Yeah. Giving a view of zones on the indicator will result in patterns of order flow that result in high probability trade situations. They'll also create a context for learning. Yeah, a context for learning. What do I mean by that? Because it'll help us to see things that would have otherwise been invisible, now we'll start seeing patterns that you would never even know were there if you didn't have the indicator on. Yeah. Well, that's a big game changer. Yeah. Yeah. The context provides uh, um, the potential for learning because all learning is done as a result of uh, contrast. Yeah. I'll show you another cool one I was going to show you guys. Um, this is a, a crude chart, but this uh, um, these uh, dots on here, um, the market's not supposed to hit one of those dots in a period less than uh, five to seven days. Yeah. So there's that dot right there, but it was from the prior day. So uh, this market came all the way up and it just missed that dot by a couple of ticks. Yeah. And was, we were in the trading room at that time and I was saying, you know, this thing came up to that dot. It's not supposed to be able to hit that in less than about five days. Yeah. And uh, market faded. Is that a zone, zone system? Yeah, you bet it is. You bet it is. This kind of stuff. So, um, okay. Um, so on the smart dynamic zones, there's two different uh, modes that I uh, put in there. There were, there were originally, we had four or five of them or something. And then we honed it down. We made the other, uh, the other ones better. And we got it down, at, we got it down to two of them. Yeah. So there's two different viewpoints on, on this, uh, on, a, on a zone. And my original teaching in zones, um, has to do with inflection points, but in the following uh, way. So this is a, a concept here. Yeah, another page in the 600 page book. Yeah. The strength with which you depart from a pivot is significant. Okay. The strength with which you depart from a pivot or a zone, as people call them price zones. The term probably gets overused out there. I don't really know. Yeah. But the strength with which you depart is significant. That's why if order flow leads price and we're getting strong order flow away from the um, uh, departing from that level, then it would stand to reason that the order flow could tell us that it's departing, excuse me, before price will. What's that mean? That means you can get a discount. Yeah, that's one way of thinking about it. The other, so that's significant, yeah. So, you know, don't just take that with a grain of salt and move on. 
you know, put that on your list of things to think about. And then um, uh, midpoints. Well, we were talking about that earlier, you know, as W.D. Gann said that, you know, midpoints are the most important part on a chart. We talked about uh, that in terms of a halfback early. Halfback as a trend indicator. Well, how about um, midpoints as a counter trend indicator going with the trend? Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Oh, you mean the market makes an extension, say going up, comes back to its uh, uh, half point and then goes higher again, comes back to its half point, goes higher again, comes back to its half point, goes higher again. Yeah. This kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm not gonna cover all these things in every conceivable detail, but that's the concept that we're uh, dealing with on that. And I'm gonna show you some charts in a few minutes that you can see what that kind of stuff looks like. So what's the difference between looking at a zone as an inflection point or a midpoint or an extreme? Most analysts look at the extremes. You're gonna look at the highs or the lows. We were talking earlier, uh, the notion of a zone as the overnight high or overnight low or the, um, or the uh, value area high or the value area low, these kinds of things, yeah. But what you really wanna look at is the, the strength with which or the character with which it departs from those areas, yeah. That's what you really wanna be looking at. Most people just looking at the extreme, oh, that's the value area high or the value area low. Yeah. But we're talking about um, understanding the quality with which it is um, uh, undertaking that, yeah, at some level. Yeah, don't mean to get all uh, rigorous about that. It's just a concept, yeah, it's just a concept. So, you know, you don't apply rules to it that you must adhere to, you know, under all circumstances while a tsunami's coming in, <laughs> right? If it's got the elephants are uh, running for the hills, the dogs and the chickens and the elephants are running for the hills and all the humans are standing there on the beach <laughs> going, I wonder why the tide's getting sucked out right now. <laughs> it went out about a mile. It never does that. Yeah. And standing there, and the next thing you know, you got a giant tsunami coming. Yeah. So, um, so we're talking about strength of departure with zones. Yeah. Something, um, an extreme zone point leaves out, looking at just the extreme by itself. This concept is also for those who are in my trading room and have, uh, you know, done some of my training and stuff like that. This concept is also related to pivot retakes, but you're looking at the quality of the pivot retake. Yeah. yeah. So pivot, so you also talk about pivot retags as zones. What's a pivot retag? It's where you come back and touch a prior area on the chart. Well, that's similar to doing that. Yeah, it is. So, so that's why I threw that in there. So this kind of stuff's related. Yeah. So you can do it with the market comes back and touches prior areas on the chart that it already touched or half points or this kind of thing. Yeah, so. um, and you know, if you were developing a trading system uh, using these kinds of concepts, you'd probably want to look at both of these. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, you're testing 40,000 different things. Yeah. No end to it. Yeah. So, um, so we're going to cover the two modes of uh, operation in a few slides coming up. Yeah, half points and inflection. Um, so a few uh, patterns that you uh, might have if you um, if you've got a zone. Now, when we apply a zone to order flow, and the way that we're going to uh, organize order flow with the trap trader oscillator from uh, Indicator Smart, the that indicator is designed to be detrended, so it moves in a band between zero and hundred. So we don't need to worry about um, at least on the order flow. We don't need to worry about the uh, trending of it because it's all detrended and uh, just trades it as, as a percentage, basically. Yeah. And so when a zone gets created and those inflection points are order flow, which tends to lead, when you come back into uh, one of those zones um, and then hook back out of it, um, you uh, have some uh, momentum going in that direction. Yeah because you came back to a prior important area and then you hook back out of it. Again, we'll have some charts in a couple minutes. Uh, what's another one where it would completely cross the zone and then hook all the way back through it again? Well, that's even stronger because that creates a big trap. Yeah. And then um, 
you know, there are different themes and variations that you could uh, do with this. Does it hook inside the zone and go out? Does it completely cross the zone and go out? Does it hook completely outside of the zone? Um, different uh, themes and variations. Food for thought if you're developing systems, yeah. Trading systems, you're coding stuff up in Bloodhound and all that kind of stuff, yeah. So, and then I'm, I'm gonna show you too how you can code with this stuff uh, pretty easily because we built it all in there. Trend and counter trend methods, we've already been talking about that. Yeah. Uh, in and out of bounds of uh, zones. Now, uh, this one's uh, kind of interesting, and this works pretty well in the ES. It doesn't work quite as good in, uh, say, like crude oil, but where the zone itself gets out of bounds on the indicator. Uh, like I just said, the indicator goes from zero to 100. So, you know, if you take 80 as an overbought level and 20 as an oversold level, uh, when when the zone itself moves out of bounds or close to it, those are uh, also uh, key uh, departure areas, or can be, particularly in the ES. And like I said, we'll look at a, uh, some of those in a minute. So a couple of secrets of order flow, just kind of recap, and I'll just go through this real quick. Order flow tends to lead price. It shows you what pure price action traders cannot see by looking at a chart. It's a view inside, you know, because it's lead. And I've done uh, different prior webinars on this concept. You can check out the webinars page on the uh, Oil Trading Room website if you want to find some more of that kind of stuff uh, that we've done in the past with Sharp. Yeah. Um, with Smart Dynamic Zone Concepts, you can see even more of what you cannot see by looking at a chart due to the context it provides. We just talked about that. Leadouts in order flow tend to lead price movement. This is a push. I call it a push. Yeah. Uh, secrets of trend, because we're going to take order flow and trend, we're going to make a little system out of it here in a few minutes. Yeah. Um, trend can add up to 20% probability or more to your favor on a trade. Probably more. I'm just being conservative. Yeah. Trade with the trend. Um, and particularly if you trade with the trend, but inside structure. So we're just talking about like trading from midpoints or something. So the trend's up, but you're at a midpoint. Yeah, what is that? It's a squeeze, it's a push and a pull. Yeah. You just talk about, um, just use the term push, and then you got the push and the pull. You know, one thing's pushing, one thing's pulling, you're gonna have traders trapped on the wrong side of the market. So um, you can determine trend purely structurally, or you can do it with uh, things like smart price bands. You know, and we're probably gonna, uh, I think we're gonna use a smart price band. Um, uh, in a little system that we're going to uh, code up or not. I'm not probably not going to code it. We won't have time. Um, but um, I'll show you how to code it, you know, in a few minutes. Uh, in different time intervals, frames, or dimensions. Yeah. Um, and so um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you, shoot, man, we should do the uh, charts first. Let's do the charts first, and then we'll, we'll come back, and I'll show you the coding. Okay, so this is smart dynamic zones on price. Okay, on price. I just put uh, this in here, and what this thing is actually doing is just pointing out the midpoints. Yeah, these are the halfbacks. Um, it's a moving halfback, is uh, basically what it is. Yeah. Um, at least in simple concept. And then there are inputs on this tool that you can actually uh, filter to what degree it will allow it to. Um, uh, interpret that on, you know, so you could make these a lot wider if you wanted to, yeah. So what I did was just as proof of concept kind of thing, and this is if you're developing a trading system, any one of the components in the system, you want it to stand on its own, yeah. There's another page in the book. Any one of the components in the system, you want it to be able to stand on its own. I did this on the ES, you know, I did this on the ES. If you break below the zone, you sell. If you break above it, you buy. If those two bands come together, which they shouldn't under normal circumstances, but because of this consolidation, it did that. I found when the bands come together like that in a trend, you definitely don't want to take a counter trend, but it signaled it on the reversal bar there, so I put it in there. So below the zone, this is an example of where you hook below the zone entirely. You're not even touching the zone. We talked about that a few minutes ago. That's another page in the book. Um, here you're departing from the zone. Yeah. 
departing from the zone, departing from the zone, departing from the zone, departing from the zone, departing from the zone. And what you're getting here is, what, what I'm keying in on is the reversal bar, the reversal bar on a red background, a red bar, a red background, you know, departure from the zone. Here's departure from the zone going up, departure from the zone going up. So I tested like five days of this. I already know this works, okay? I tested five days of this and uh, smart dynamic zone on price only, any occurrence, you know, 134 in the sample, you know, 86% uh, with a five tick uh, break even, you know, five tick break even. This has an edge of about 10%. It beats break even by 10%. Uh, which is actually pretty good. Um, you can get higher. You can certainly get higher. You know? What is that? Well, you know, like a McDonald's franchise or something uh, operates on like uh, one or two percent or something like that. Yeah, this is ten. You know, that's ten. So, so uh, proof of concept: Can smart dynamic zones price only? Um, operate on its own? Yeah, at about 86%. Okay, cool, right? Well, that's good to know. Um, the, uh, there are other modes that I could do this on. I could, I could talk about selling it uh, from the other side of the band too, stuff like that, but we're not covering that right here. I'm just using a proof of concept, breaking out of the zone or hooking below, uh, below or above the zone. Um, there are different themes and variations of this that you can do. Okay, so then what I did was I took the order flow. That's this panel right here. Now what I have here actually, these background colors on this are not uh, Bloodhound. Uh, they're the indicator itself. I could have coded it to make that color in, in uh, Bloodhound, but the indicator itself is coloring the background. So this, uh, the one on price has its own color, and the one on the Trap Trader Oscillator from Indicator Smart has its own color. You know, has its own color. And so when those two line up, I'm going to take the trade instead. Yeah, I'm going to take the trade instead. And that, that little guy there that uh, was from that previous chart still trapped you out right there. Yeah. But when I did this one, I got about 89%. Yeah, 89%. What's that tell me? It tells me that the, uh, the order flow has given me a little bit of an edge. Yeah. The order flow is given a little bit of edge in the way I'm doing it. And I'm doing it in the sloppiest possible way here. I'm not trying to hone in on anything. These just happen to be the charts from like yesterday. Um, and so that's, uh, uh, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So uh, this one's got an edge of about 12% or something. Yeah. So um, do I consider this to be a trading system? I could, but uh, for the purposes of this webinar, I just wanted to show you that there's a bias on this kind of thinking. Yeah, um, a bias on this kind of thinking. Um, and then also that you could see the way these zones are being applied uh, on this one, uh, basically to the midpoints on the price. And on this one, we wanna see it breaking out of the zone um, with the, uh, with the uh, and breaking out of price at the same time. Yeah, like this guy right there. Yeah. When you get that complete zone cross like that, that's actually uh, better than any of the others. But I, I didn't code it that way. I coded it for any hook out of the zone. Any hook out of the zone. Yeah. But you can get more um, stringent about it. And I'm gonna show you in a minute. So uh, let's take a minute right here. And I'm gonna show you, um, I just put this chart together for you. Uh, it's the same chart that those other screenshots were taken off of. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I can go into the um, dynamic zones and I can turn off the background color. Turn off the background color. And that will um, uh, clear the chart so that Bloodhound can uh, paint it. Bloodhound uh, paints all the panels. Yeah, Bloodhound paints all the panels. Um, and so I'll give this chart a second to load because I think I've got quite a few days on here. 
and then um, we're going to uh, go take a look at this code. Yeah, that I coded up for you so we wouldn't spend a ton of time doing it. Um, so this one just shows me when there's a reversal bar. It's like we said, um, we're going to mark where the reversal bars, or we're only going to mark the reversal bars. You could consider the other bars, um, but this just makes it real easy and clean and easy to see. This is the smart dynamic zones. This is the way it's set up to code this. Actually, Zach and Mike showed me how to do this in a really cool way um, one day. Um, so uh, just what we did, I got the smart dynamic zones on there. It's being fed the trap trader oscillator. It's a nested input, yeah. And then just high cross, low cross. Yeah, that's all you gotta do. And then put a one if it's greater and uh, less than one. And it'll, uh, it'll trigger those uh, background colors uh, based on the order flow, yeah. Then this one, I put in a, um, a smart price bands on here uh, just to help when the, uh, when the zones got too smashed together, um, when, you know, when they converged entirely um, to uh, help uh, filter with that. Um, and um, uh, this is a little bit of a filter there. And then, or I'm sorry, this is the one uh, on price. That's the one that we looked at first, just the one on price. Yeah, same code. Yeah, it's the same code. You just have uh, long, short, high line, low line. Yep. Applied to price itself, no embedding. Yeah. And then this one is a smart price band just to uh, help with the trend. Yeah, because we know the trend adds uh, up to 20%. You know, yes, we already had a trend indicator, but, um, but sometimes that, um, that trend indicator gets smashed where the lines come completely together, where it gets real choppy. And so I put that in there to help with that a little bit. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure it really made uh, any uh, much difference, but uh, just a simple system. And uh, we designed this thing so that you can just really easily code stuff, yeah, uh, using that. Yeah, so um, Abhay, um, when you, um, are departing from a zone, when you're departing from a zone, um, you're looking at these two bands right here, and I'm departing from the zone to the downside. Yeah, departing from the zone to the downside. Here I'm departing to the zone to the upside. Yeah. Oh, there was another one I was going to show you. It's kind of cool. I. Uh, had told you that when on the ES, in particular, it works on other markets as well, but it, uh, the ES uh, gets a little bit more sloppy and you get this dynamic zone on the order flow almost to that uh, 20 uh, line right there. Yeah, when you get that and you hook, um, uh, hook back inside, there's a pretty good chance. There's a pretty good chance. You're going higher. Yeah. Um, I don't see one that went way up to the upside. Uh, you get that here again, it ends up being a, a bit of a, a scalp kind of thing. Uh, this one here, real nice. Yeah, you go completely out of the bands and then you hook back inside. Yeah, these are great little patterns. Yeah. Just kind of throwing that in on the side there for you. Yeah. So, um, okay, let's see what else we got. Um, so, that's a little bit about uh, how you can code. Uh, with these things super, super easy, yeah, super easy. So we started the webinar discussing how you structurally build a system using zones, yeah? And then we went into, we uh, took some concepts about zones, how markets behave at inflection points, zones, midpoints, price, order flow, yeah? Could be anything, yeah, because the tool accepts uh, any input. Yeah, let me show you how you do that. Let me show you how you do that. If I want the uh, smart dynamic zone applied to uh, order flow or whatever uh, indicator, all I do is I go to the input series and I select the trap trader oscillator. Yeah, on the one in that first panel, I just uh, selected price. Uh, price. It's just the uh, uh, ES, yeah, just the ES. 
and you can input anything in there you want. Uh, so like, you know, if I uh, went on here, I could go select, uh, you know, I could go select, you know, any, any one of these indicators or any, any indicator in here, any, yeah. And input it into the, um, into the uh, dynamic zones. Yeah, pretty cool, yeah. Um, the smart breakpoints um, from Indicator Smart works in a similar way, but it's taking the outside of the inflection point. Yeah. And that gives us other really amazing patterns. We've done other webinars on that kind of stuff, but probably not as cool as, well, at least it hasn't been presented in as cool of a way as this has probably. Yeah. So, um, so you can input anything in there. Yeah. And then um, you can put it all together and you can stack these things together. If any of those given components uh, stands on its own in the way that we just tested, what we're using to do that test, we use trade markers from Indicator Smart, Smart Trade Markers. Yeah. That's uh, what we use to get these reports and mark the charts yeah, so that we get statistics. So like everything we do has some kind of basis in statistics. And so, but uh, when any of those components uh, holds their own statistically, then you get what's called probability stacking. Yeah, you get what's called probability stacking when things line up, particularly if they're uncorrelated. Well, order flow is technically uncorrelated to price, technically, um, because it's happening a little bit before usual. Yeah, so um, you then you get different kinds of stacking. Now, I've covered that in so many past webinars, it's crazy. So um, look at the webinars page on Oil Trading Room if you wanna uh, learn more about that. All these indicators that we've used in here today are uh, from Indicator Smart. You know, smart Trade Marker, Smart Dynamic Zone, Smart Trap Trader Oscillator, Smart Price Band, you know, Bloodhound. Bloodhound available from Shark, yeah. So, okay, um, so, Make sure when you build your trading system, you know, Shark Indicator is all about trading systems. Yeah, that's why I do this webinar. I don't have to do a webinar on building systems, but that's really what this webinar is about. This webinar is about building systems. That's what Shark is about, building systems. So I'm taking, you know, you, you're interested in Bloodhound. Bloodhound is an amazing product, okay? It's an amazing product because it enables you to pull all this stuff together. It, it enables you to embed stuff in ways that you otherwise couldn't do. Yeah. So, but make sure that you build those systems from proven concepts like the one that we're talking about in here. Preferably based on stuff that you've observed and not on something that you read in a book um, by somebody who, you know, is talking about something 30 years ago on a market that has nothing to do with anything that's happening today or whatever. You know, that's a whole nother page in the book uh, of the 600 page book, yeah. So it's always recommended that you perfect one thing before taking on another, yeah. It's way nicer that way. The journey is much nicer that way, uh, your journey to the holy grail, yeah. So earlier we talked about that 600 page book. I've made some references to the pages along the way. We talked about a lot of things. Any one of them could be a book in itself, yeah. Could, if you really wanted to get down to it. So, but if you just take these generalized concepts and you hold them in your mind, um, I think it'll uh, be a nice thing for you uh, going forward. Uh, at least that would be my, my hope, is that I in some way expand your consciousness in some way that uh, improves your, uh, your trade. Yeah, that's the idea, that was what I was hoping for. So we've only scratched the surface of what I teach and what I do. Yeah, if you like the kinds of thinking behind, um, you know, what we've done and uh, discussed in this webinar, yeah, well then join the trading room, yeah, because uh, this is just the uh, tip of an iceberg, really, yeah. Um, but at the same time, I, uh, I must tell you again, if you get in there, focus on the one thing. I want to probably pretty much tell you what to focus on. Why? Because I know if you focus on that one thing, <laughs> You'll learn, you'll learn 47 other things. Yeah. So the applications I teach can be used in any market. See the resources page at the end of the webinar. I'm gonna give you a link in a minute, yeah. I gotta, um, so if you wanna go to a higher level, uh, you can get the tools from indicatorsmart.com. 
yeah, I'm going to give you a resource page. Um, the Smart Patterns Trading System, the components that we've been using and that we're talking about, um, I developed years and years ago. Um, the, probably the difference between um, what I uh, have to offer, um, you know, I could say this for Shark too. Um, I don't have a new product. It's very rare that I roll out a new uh, product uh, like uh, uh, like uh, what I've done today. Why? Because the old stuff works. <laughs> so I'm like the most boring uh, developer on the planet. You know, why? Because I don't have a new bell and whistle every every week. You know, so, uh, but this smart dynamic zones that I showed you, man, it's like, I just love it. And I think other uh, people that are using it uh, in the trading room, the uh, response has been tremendous. Uh, transformative yeah so um, smart patterns trading system is what's behind all this and all the things that we talked about these tools enable you to deal with that as a cohesive whole uptrend downtrend counter trend scalping uh, whatever be your uh, your favorite flavor you know so what's the oil trading room uh, like I said we're uh, coming up on our sixth year here um, it's amazing to me um, uh, how much I've learned uh, doing the room, you know, um, but uh, we have a lot to offer there using all the concepts and tools and everything that we've been um, talking about today. Uh, I'd invite, invite you if you uh, liked what we were talking about to join the oil trading room, you know, at oiltradingroom.com. Um, now, to even make all this even more um, a cohesive whole, um, I was approached, I'm, I run, won the Robbins World Cup Championship. Um, I've done a lot of work with Robbins uh, Trading Company and World Cup Advisor uh, over there. And they approached me in a partnership uh, with a large brokerage and we created futuresautotrading.com. It's just getting started. It's in its infancy, um, but we're looking for talent. Yeah, we're looking for traders. So what does that mean? And this doesn't, you know, we don't charge you $349 a month to prove that you're good enough to us to trade. We just charge you a little setup fee to get it all set up for you and everything. Um, but um, if you're looking for a trading program, we've got some on there that are uh, good. We've got some more coming on board. We've got any number of new traders that are uh, coming on board. Um, but if you want to leverage a trading program that you have or that you're developing trading programs, that kind of thing, into dollars, uh, go over there and sign up as a as a free leader and learn a little bit more about what we're doing over there. Okay, I'm also going to give you a resource on uh, on that uh, here in a minute, futuresautotrading.com. You just do the free sign up and learn a little bit uh, about it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for coming in today, and I'd like to again thank Keith and everybody at Shark um, for uh, putting this uh, Shark Week on, and we've been doing Shark Week for years now. Um, there's a resource pages, indicatorsmart.com backslash SDZ. Let me make sure that um, that's uh, good to go because there was an issue with that. Indicatorsmart.com backslash SDZ. Oh no, how's that possible? All right, let me check what's going on. Our website's never done. Yeah, something weird's going on. That should not be done. I just tried it. It seems to work for me. It says SDZ. Yeah, okay. Thank, webinar thank resource you. Page. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, just um, uh, SDZ. Yeah. I just try to make the link uh, short there for that. Okay, guys. Um, again, uh, thank, hey, thanks, Keith, for, um, uh, for putting this on and uh, including me. And thanks, everybody, for coming in. Um, we're uh, right up to our uh, hour here. I didn't see, um, I, you know, Abe, I don't talk about the ES, uh, well, maybe a little bit, um, uh, just because I'm doing some, you know, I've got ES charts up and stuff. Um, but the reason that I, oh, hey, Tracy, um, the reason that I, um, uh, 
taught in CL initially is um, is because it's it's not as noisy as the other markets. It's a little, in my opinion, it's a little bit easier to learn. At the same time, um, at the same time, uh, it can eat you for lunch, you know. But the ES can too. So you know. Anyways, I started teaching uh, in crude oil, um, and at the at that time uh, when we started that. So uh, let let me just finish, Bruce, and then I'll I'll get to your question. Um, at the time that I started the oil room, um, the stock indexes were just like flatlining. But uh, crude oil doesn't get into those like doldrum periods, you know. We didn't have like back then, you know, five years ago or whatever, you know, the, the stock indexes, the whole day could be seven handles. <laughs> and that's not good for an intraday trade. You know, but these days, wow, you know, I think today it's probably 24 uh, handles or something like that. Plenty to play with. Stock indexes are great. But we have a stock index trading room. Yeah. Stock index trading room is good for that. So, Bruce, we got a lot of people using this um, stuff on Forex. Yeah. Um, I'm I don't I'm not gonna bad mouth anything. Okay. It's not my style. Yeah. Not my style. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Steve's in here. Uh thanks for coming, Steve. Um be careful with Forex. Yeah. Not Forex futures, but be careful with Forex because um the, you know they give you different they give you different data feeds, you know, they're pulling pips out of it and, um, you know, stuff like that. So your expenses may not be um, entirely clear. Yeah. So may or may not be, depending on where you are, uh, you know, you could be getting different data feeds and stuff like that. So just be careful with that. But this stuff works in Forex great. Yeah, works in Forex great, especially if you're scalping. Uh, well, either either way, yeah. The patterns that we're talking about are universal, and so I'm just going to say one more thing about this. Everything that I talk about from a trading perspective, this is kind of um, crazy. What's the what's the material world made out of? Yeah, I don't mean to get all esoteric or sound all fancy or anything like that. What's the material world made out of? It's made out of geometries. Yeah, energy, but energy that arranges itself in, in geometries. Yeah. Well, what's on our chart? Geometry. We've got geometry of order flow um, compared to the geometry of the price and the relationships therein, right? I don't care if you take that to the ES, to crude oil, to gold, to, um, you know, US dollar, Great Brit pounds, you know, Chinese yuan, you know, Hong Kong, whatever thing. The principles are the same. One thing I will say about uh, crude oil, and we did talk about this today in the room, we have one report a week. In, um, in Forex, you need to be much more savvy, I, I, uh, I think, you know, or I'm suggesting that you'd be cautious about reports can, information can be released at uh, different times. Um, and it's nice to be in markets where you know uh, specifically when policy changes might be uh, happening and things like that. So, you know, that Forex factory, um, uh, that Forex, fa this, uh, uh, this uh, Forex factory, uh, uh, report. And you know what else is really cool about this? Uh, you can go back and back and back and back and pull all the uh, pull all the reports. Yeah, you can go back years on this thing. It's really awesome. So make sure you're uh, keeping on top of when those are. In, uh, in crude, we just got that one a week, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but it's good to know when your report times are and stuff like that. So, all right, guys, any other questions before I go? Um, I don't do trials, Joe, because, um, you know, you really, if, if, if you don't vibe enough to want to do, um, then, you know, it may not, 
it may not be for you. Um, and I'm going to tell you learning what we do because it's not like anything else you've probably ever learned. It's going to require some commitment. So, uh, you know, if you come in on a trial, I just found people just not, I don't, you know, we don't want to have the tire kickers. We're really a, a pro room that has everything from kindergarten to PhD level going on in it. And um, so, you know, I just ask that you make the commitment. Uh, if you want a bloodhound template, uh, I could, you mean this one that I coded up here? I'll, I'll give you that, but you got to have the indicators for it. Yeah, got to have the indicators for it. So we've got um, a dy dynamic. So on that uh, resources page, dynamic zone, trap trader oscillator, smart price bands. Um, that'd be all you need to make this, pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Smart dynamic zones, trap trade, trader oscillator, smart uh, price bands. Yeah, pretty sure. Um, um, let me see. Um, what I had on there. Uh, stats and probabilities just coming right out of my head or uh, in the room. We've got uh, tables and resources for the room members that have all that stuff in there. Uh, these tables I showed you, like the super map and stuff like that, uh, we do that in the room each day. Um, yeah, so uh, this this uh, resources page here uh, has everything you need on there. So, all right, guys, that's what I got for you. Again, thanks for coming in. Sharp, thanks for having me. Yeah. And Keith, I'll hand it back over to you. Thank right. you. Thank thanks, you. Rob. It's a pleasure as always. Yeah. Leave it to you to discuss the nature of physical reality or the <laughs> yeah. chart analysis somehow. I'm sorry, man. I couldn't no, help. <laughs> uh, always, uh, always uh, bringing up some, some interesting thoughts. So, yeah. well, thanks, guys. I don't have anything to add, but uh, as always, come back tomorrow. We've got uh, Chris Lassen at noon Eastern for identifying the trend sweet spot. If that interests you, come on back. Again, sharkweek.cc is where you can find the replay for this. As always, thanks again, guys. Come on back and we'll see you next time.